Hello, 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 and welcome to Speech Goods, where we talk about business, money, mindset, and private practice, all within the realm of the speech and language pathology field. I am your host, financial enthusiast, and fellow speech language pathologist, Danny Augustine. So in today's interview, you are going to be hearing from Shannon from Speechy Musings. Shannon is a licensed and certified speech language pathologist. She earned her master's degree in speech language pathology from Radford University and her bachelor's degree from the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Shannon has also worked as an SLP in a variety of pediatric settings, including an outpatient clinic and the school system. She's also a creator, author, and blogger on her website. We all know it, Speechy Musings. Shannon is passionate about creating high quality, easy to use resources for pediatric speech language pathologists. Her favorite areas in SLP include AAC, language, and literacy. So in this interview with Shannon, you're going to hear some really awesome, just nitty gritty conversation. She talks about how she went from being a grad student to actually creating her blog about speech therapy in grad school, right? Most of us think that we need to have all this experience and all of these certifications in order to put out content and do things. But that's actually the exact opposite of what Shannon did. She started this side hustle income in grad school. We talk about being picky about whose opinions you take into account and let change your mood and change your decisions about things. She has a really, really great story that she shares about her grad school adventure. We talk about how out of the box thinking is actually a strength for her how there's no perfect choice or perfect answer and how sometimes you just have to start and in my famous words, just go do the dang thing. Okay, let's get to the interview with Shannon. (laughs) Hello, 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 Shannon. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm great. How are you? Uh, Doing fabulous. Now for anybody (laughs) who is listening to the audio and you're not watching YouTube, Uh, Shannon literally has the perfect background for this recording. (laughs) She has her Airstream in the background. She's got super cool sunglasses and she's outside (laughs) in a t-shirt in the middle of the day on a work day. I think that just like is a statement to all the things that we're going to be talking about today. What do you think? It's a vibe. It's it's an excellent (laughs) vibe for sure. It is definitely. Mostly retreating from my wild dogs, but um, also a great backdrop. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, my dog is actually sitting with me. That's why every once in a while on the podcast, you'll hear like a, kink, 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 kink. that's her shaking. <laughs> that's her like, you know, doing her little shake, getting cool. something off of her thing. My um, dogs would do much worse than shaking. They're like climbing on the laptop, barking at me. It's like, it's a lot. <laughs> that, so that mo- I hide. <laughs> yes. That mobile entrepreneur life. So we are definitely going to be getting into a lot of that today. So we know just from, we, we just heard your bio you worked in a lot of SLP settings, but you are doing this cool thing right now where you have your blog, you have your website, you have your resources and you're traveling, which is awesome. Um, okay. Spoil. I'm kind of giving some of this away. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, I just want to hear about all the things because you have just such a unique journey. So before I give it all away, Shannon, I'm going to let you take it and tell me, you know, what about you and your SLP journey has been so unique. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it has been unique. Um, other than I'm a white female, which I think is not unique. I would say the rest is, is pretty unique. Um, I, had a, I went to undergrad at University of Wisconsin-Madison, um, which is a great program for speech pathology, but unfortunately I did not have a super good GPA. Um, so from there, the struggle to get into grad school was real. Um, I worked full-time, um, up to full-time during undergrad. Um, and graduated in three and a half years just to have, you know, less loans and debt. Um, And was, I applied to 11 grad schools, um, got into three, which I, it's still like a miracle. I mean, this was in 2011 slash 12. So maybe things are a little different now, but it was extremely intense. I was so worried. I wasn't going to get anywhere. I even looked at other programs that are similar to apply to. Um, So lucky enough to get, oh, I was actually told even not to apply to grad school by all of my mentor in undergrad. Um, He didn't think I was cut out for the program for speech pathology in general. Um, Very discouraged to apply. I think he wanted me to do something more like um, uh, recreational, I can't even think of rehab, recreation, something like that. Um, But he just said speech pathology would be too competitive. He didn't think I was cut out for it. Um, I was lucky enough to not listen and applied to grad school. 
Um, I ended up only getting in out of state um, and pretty far from home. I'd lived in Wisconsin my whole life. Um, so I went to Virginia for grad school and first semester just had some homesickness sort of and around Thanksgiving time, I, all of my friends were going home to see their families. I was not going to make the road trip to Wisconsin. I didn't want to spend money on a flight. So I started a blog over Thanksgiving break and um, decided, I, you know, I'm just going to share some freebies and ideas. Um, during undergrad, I worked as a speech language pathology assistant for Marge Blanc, who specializes in like echolalia and gestalt language processing. And she had always encouraged me, like, we need more people like sharing out these ideas, um, starting blogs, all of this. So I sort of was like on my the back burner, I guess. And then I just feel like I I don't know, I was bored out of my mind, probably a little sad and just was like, I'm going to start this thing. And um, I don't know, I'm sort of an all in type of person. So I don't think this would surprise any of my friends, but I went all in on it and kind of started. I mean, it's, it's not a, it's an easy debt free business. You don't have to start with much. So it became profitable very quickly. Um, and it was an amazing support to me during grad school. Um, after grad school, I did more like the traditional SLP work. I worked in an outpatient clinic full-time, transitioned to contract work in the schools, and then did full-time work in the schools. But other than that little stint, now I'm doing speechy musings full-time, living in my Airstream camper. We are traveling full-time um, and doing just this right now. Um, so I, I think the rest of my journey sort of was unique. Um, personality wise, I think it, my, my personality is a little different compared to most speech therapists. I think that I have like, I don't know, I kind of have the hustle drive that I feel like turn off sometimes, but I have that big drive to just keep uh, <laughs> coming up with ideas and running on them and, and chasing ideas that I have. I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> um, so that's sort of how my journey unfolded, I guess, for through undergrad and grad school and starting, I started my business, yeah, first semester then in grad school. So it's been almost it's been nine years um, right now of, of running the business, which has been pretty amazing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I wrote down a bunch of questions. First question. <laughs> um, we're going to go back to the beginning. How did you, cause you kind of like, you, you didn't gloss over it, but you mentioned it like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't listen to that guy. He told me that I should be a speechologist. <laughs> like yeah. what, how did you get through that? I know for me, that would have been a huge blow. I used to be way more sensitive than, than I am now. I mean, Same. you could, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm insensitive, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but like, oh, you know, Danny in college, like that would have been a huge hit to me. Like yeah. I probably would have cried, like really cry. going back to that. <laughs> and like, this is something that you want to do. And then you have an authority figure whose opinion you're supposed to respect, whose opinion you're supposed to take into account telling you, you shouldn't do it. You're not good enough for it. Mm -hmm. Like how, how the heck did you just be like, eh, I think I'm going to do it anyway. Um, that's a really good question. I'm not even totally certain, like what the mindset was that, that propelled me. I will say I wasn't somebody who went to undergrad and was like, speech pathology is what I'm doing, or this is it for me. Um, I feel like I really didn't, I, I don't like school. I don't like uh, college. I don't like like that whole scene. Um, I, I mean, I like the college scene, but I didn't like the studying school scene. Um, so I didn't want to go to grad school. I didn't want to choose a career that required more education beyond my undergrad. Um, so I do feel like I was sort of torn. I, I think it's so funny. I ended up here because even my mom was, was shocked when I said, I think I'm going to try and do it. I think she was certain. I just didn't want to do more school. I didn't want more loans. I didn't want more of any of it. Um, I think I really just came down to like making an intentional decision, which might be something that I bring up again and again, where I just like sat down, I weighed all of my choices. Um, and I did have backup plans. Like I did have other degrees and fields and things I would have done. Um, I'm certain I would have, would have done something, but you know, I don't know that it even was like resiliency at that point, as much as just like, I didn't know what else I was going to do sort of. And I don't know, I sort of, um, I just don't know that I really bought into what he was saying. I mean, can we swear on your podcast? <laughs> he wasn't, he was an a-hole like as a personality trait. Um, so like, I sort of like, I don't know if I took him that serious. It hurt my feelings greatly. I cried the entire walk home. Um, I had my fingernails painted with polka dots and he told me people who do that, like don't have the commitment because 
they're spending too much time on like frivolous things. And I just remember like, I kind of felt like he was maybe a little sexist. Like, you know, yeah. like I'm like, um, I don't know that. So I don't know that I took his opinion like that seriously, although it did like greatly destroy like my, you know, my, my mood that day. Like I cried and cried because I just felt like he was like sort of picking on me and, I don't know. He, he pointed out my last name isn't spelled how it's pronounced. So how could I have a good understanding of phonetics or he was just like being Whoa. a jerk the whole time. So I literally saw him like, I don't even know, three years ago, I live really close to that campus now, or I did prior to living in the camper. And I saw him on the bike trail and I flipped him off and I was biking past him. And it was like the most cathartic thing. I was like, yes, um, it was just he was just a jerk. I don't know. So <laughs> I don't know if it was his personality that made me sort of discredit what he was telling me to be like, I really think I could do this if I wanted to do this, but he was just a jerk. And I've heard now sharing, I've shared this on Speechy Musing several times. People know what school I went to and they know exactly who he is when I say this. And I, he's done this to so many people. It's not like he picked on me. I, it just is like, I think it's like his MO to make sure that people are really committed when they apply, but it, it, that's not really what you do to a 20 year old who's like, I think this is the, you know, what I want to do with my life. So I don't know if it was resiliency or just me sort of like discrediting his opinion, I guess at that time. <laughs> well, no, I think that, and I think that's actually, a, I think I'm glad that you brought that up. Um, first of all, yes, that is very sexist, by the way, that's just like all the ist. The, yeah, it the was, ist it was ist. all the ist. It all was the horrible, ist. horrible. Right. Yeah. We're just, I'm just going to like lay that on the table before <laughs> I continue. Uh, if you are not watching this on video, my mouth was like jaw dropping open the whole time. Uh, but I think that really highlights the fact um, to be picky about whose opinions you're going to let influence your decisions. Yes. Because, you know, there's always, especially like if you're entering the online space, and kind of like putting yourself out there, like that, which is you're doing that with what well, you're doing that with speech and musings. Like you're putting your material out there. You're putting your opinions out there um, yeah. on the internet for anyone to see, <laughs> you know, there's always going to be somebody that's got something to say about you, no matter, no matter what it is, but it's just kind of about like having a good filter. Um, and you were able to filter out that this guy was a butthole. <laughs> um, and yes, like it, it always hurts when someone says, I mean, says mean things to you or bullies you essentially, but just kind of like, sounds like that's what was happening. Um, but kind of making sure that you're not allowing that to influence like your life decisions and being picky about who am I going to let into my, into my safe space aura of decision-making things. Exactly. Like he's not the one who's going to go to school and be me for the next 30 years in my career and have to do what I commit myself to, you know, he's not the one who has to show up every day picking this. So I think that's sort of what I was, he's not going to, and I didn't apply to that school um, for grad school. I don't think I would have been in. It's not like, I think that's like, I made that decision, but I didn't even apply. I didn't want to be around that type of, you know, a person who doesn't think I can do it is not the um, professor or mentor that, yeah, I need in my, in my life. But yeah. that's so and true because it's true bigger. It's true for when you start a business, it's true for for any time you're trying to decide what your path is or your thing is, it's, it's really tricky to make sure you're listening to the right people for sure. Yes. Did you get any, because you started this in grad, you were, it was it undergrad or grad. You started grad school, lot. first semester grad of school. grad school. Okay. So you were like, you weren't even a full SLP yet. No. Starting an SLP blog. <laughs> did anyone give you crap about that? Or did you have um, anyone who was discouraging? Sort of. I mean, I'm like, like you said, I'm getting less sensitive as I get older. I feel like I'm like naturally a pretty sensitive person. And so like, I feel like my brain sometimes like likes to read stuff that I'm like, it couldn't even about, it could be about anybody. It's not even about me, but it's like, people shouldn't be sharing. I, like I read these vague opinions and I'm like, I'm doing that. Um, but I don't, I don't think anyone like came after me at that time. I mean, there was not a lot of S there was no really SLP blogs. I think I was probably one of the first five people to sort of start doing this. So I don't know that there was even like haters at that time, although there were people questioning, of course, uh, what advice we're sharing and who you're learning from. But it's not like I was teaching people um, speech sound intervention practices. I was literally writing about like my application process, how I got into grad school, navigating um, the praxis tests. Um, I even wrote about just social isolation in grad school. Um, I, so, you know, and then I wrote about activities and stuff, but I feel like maybe talking more and more about like stuff maybe a licensed therapist should do sort of grew as it, my blog grew, but it definitely started as sort of just like me just sharing like how I got in, 
I had my low GPA of three, three. So you don't hear many people. I mean, that was when I can't even think of what the forum was. There was some forum where I was just obsessed with, um, something cafe, grad school um, cafe. Yeah. And like gotcha. obsessed with all the stats and like obsessed. And so I thought someone who with a low GPA who actually like gets in and does the thing should be sharing about this. So, um, I didn't receive a lot of like naysayers at the beginning, but, um, I think I was more in my head than actually other people telling me you shouldn't be doing this. Well, and you were also sharing what you knew. And I think that's really yeah. wise and how your business has grown with you. Mm -hmm. Um, but always, you know, acting in integrity, standing in integrity that like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put out material about stuff that, that I have no experience in or blah, 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 <laughs> um, yep. making sure that you're, cause that's the thing. Like, I think a lot of us feel like, especially when it comes to starting businesses or blogs or whatever, that we have to kind of reinvent the wheel and we have to go get this whole other skill. Like I see mm. that a lot with people who are potentially like even wanting to leave the SLP field of like, okay, like I need to go get a different degree. Um, but a lot of times you can, some, a lot of times the information you already have um, is valuable to someone, For right? Sure. You just yes. have to figure out like how you're going to share that and who you're, who is your audience mm -hmm. at that point. Absolutely. I think one of my personality traits is I think I'm like a little scrappy, like a little, uh, you know, I'll get in there and kind of, yeah, kind of, I don't know, get a little scrappy and fight for what I want a little bit. And I think, uh, make do with what I have, you know, and kind of just, so I don't think that my, I don't think my personality is one where I think I need to know more before I start. I'm sort of like, I'm going to jump in, get all scrappy and just like make it work. So I think that has been a huge advantage as well. Um, for just making things happen. <laughs> And I think that's very unlike a lot of, cause you mentioned that you're kind of more, you, you don't feel like you're kind of the typical SLP personality. And mm -hmm. I think what you just said, I think highlights really highlights that because a lot of us, you know, a lot of us in this field do struggle with like perfectionism and I have to get it perfect before I put it out there. Um, whereas mm -hmm. the fact that you kind of didn't have that personality trait about yourself allowed you to just start this like so early, like you weren't even in your career yet. Like you were still in school for it. <laughs> So yeah. how did you yeah. know uh, insofar as like blogging? Cause you started creating, you even started creating an income with your blog early on. Yeah. How did you even like know how to do that? Like, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, like I, I kind of alluded to in my intro, I, I feel like I'm sort of, um, I don't know. I don't want to say hustle because I just, I am sort of anti hustle culture a little, you know, I don't think that we should be burning ourselves to the ground, but I have that, I have that tendency to sort of hustle. Um, I feel like once I graduated high school, um, I'm first generation college student. I don't think I really knew the college thing, how to, how to do the college thing. And I think I've been really money obsessed. I, I didn't want to be in a hole. Like I grew up without a lot of money. Um, and I just didn't want to sort of repeat all of this. So I kind of feel like I, I mean, I flipped it right away because I was, I'm like all in, you know, I just like, I went all in and I just, I feel like I needed money. I needed sort of security at that time. I owed, I had undergrad loans, grad school out of state was just Oh, I was, it's so stressful to commit to doing that because that was just a huge amount that I was taking out. I owed my parents money for living expenses, you know? So I'm just feeling like, I felt like I was just owing every, you know, everyone, everything. So I kind of wanted to just do something for me, like put all into something that I thought would, would help and support me for, for a while. Um, but I think it started sort of like, I just think I, I knew I needed to make it happen. And then once, I mean, the first, I think month I put something up, I think I made like $6 in November, that first November I started. And I literally think that was my favorite $6 I ever made. I got a Starbucks drink. I never allowed myself like any treats, every meal. I would like force down meals that tasted horrible. Cause I'm like, I spent money on these ingredients, you know, like I'm eating it. So I went out and I got Starbucks and I was like, this is like, you know, for doing something, I can even talk about sort of, um, I had lots of little like niche things that I've done in undergrad and grad school that led to like making materials and making training things. So I, it was like the first time I had made money off of doing that, but I had made like, I had made friends save the dates. I made, um, certi certification like programs. I had made like all sorts of different stuff. And it was like the first time making money off of it. And so then I feel like it was just like, I have the skills. I, I, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And 
I don't know, I love to talk and share ideas. So, you know, none of the blogging was difficult. And I don't know, I think it's like when you find the right thing, I, you hear people say this all the time, people who are lucky and get this, this opportunity in their lives, but where it's like, oh, I had all these 10 random experiences and they all sort of actually come, you know, to work with me at this one job. Like they all were pieces of the puzzle. I didn't know I was putting together at the time. That's sort of how I felt. So to me, once I started it, like all those pieces were in place, all of my experiences sort of like built me and my skill level. I feel like I just, I just literally ran with it. Like I, I went all in experienced quick success. And then that just channels more, you know, desire to keep doing it and the cycle continues. So, yeah. Yeah. It's just like allowing yourself for that quick success is, True. I think a lot of us are even afraid to put something out there. So like, did you, did you just, did you just have like ads on your blog and you would no, like literally selling materials from the get-go. So I sold oh. like little Arctic. Um, so one of my b- first blog posts was like 10 acti- articulation activities and it was like to get in high reps. So I had like little Dixie cups and little um, Arctic pictures on top of them. So I sold like little Arctic pictures and this is pre like clip art being like really readily available. Like, you, you know, you could only make board maker stuff basically um, when I started. So anything that was like non board maker type activities were what I did. There is like nothing from when I originally started selling that I sell any longer. <laughs> they have been right. deleted and moved past. But um, yeah, I, I feel the mo- I never did ads on my blog. It was all material creation that um, kind of started making money. That's awesome. So you just went, I mean, yeah, like you just did the dang thing. You went, you put something out there. You didn't, you know, and I think a lot of us want to wait till everything's perfect and things are exactly the way it wants to be. But you even said like the stuff that you first put out there that you were able to get some success with is not stuff that you're putting out now. And that's fine. That doesn't mean that the stuff that you were putting out was bad. It's just that your, your business and everything kind of grew with you. And I mean, I, I tell, I've told several people who've reached out about starting a business. Like if the first thing you put out is the quality that you're making three years later, you started like literally so too late, like years too late. Like there shouldn't, there should be a significant learning curve when you start. And if there isn't, you were holding back for a really long time. Like, I feel like when you start, like to me, creating things, producing things and putting them out there is the learning curve. That is how you learn how to like make better things. And you get feedback from people. You use them, you know, like you're just not going to get better just making material. Like if you want to make materials, you're not going to get better and have that learning curve by just like making them secretively. Actually putting them out there to me is what creates that growth. Like the materials I made even three years ago, I know I can tell differences than what I'm doing today or, you know, and so I'm actually constantly always going back and trying to update old things too. But, you know, I'm always like, if you feel really confident at the beginning, um, you waited too long (laughs) because it should be, it should be a little scary. There should be some learning curve. I think that with starting a private practice and all that too, some people wait till they're like, I've got all the knowledge. I've taken 17 courses. Now I know the whole range of pediatric issues, but it's like, you know, I, I almost think then you're, you've wasted time and potential of like clients you could have been serving in all of that time that would have benefited from your work. So, um, I also joke, I have to like channel perfectionism with my blog. I have to be like, slow down. Like, you know, like this needs to be better. Like I have to like, really like almost like be like, be a perfectionist, <laughs> look for errors. <laughs> yes. Look for I, spelling errors. <laughs> yeah. My, my personality is sort of the opposite. So I do actually have to like really, uh, almost do the opposite. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, and just knowing yourself and yeah. w- w- what you were saying earlier is, uh, Jenna Gastric has She always says she has a course, um, that I love that's helping SLP start private practices. And she says, create, don't wait of yep, just like, like just putting something out there and yep. it's a moment of vulnerability. And I think we need, like, we can acknowledge oh, yes. that. 100%. It's, yes. Like it's vulnerability to put yourself out there. Like it is like, I am showing vulnerability by recording myself talking to you and to everybody else and putting it out there for people to, to listen to you yeah. show vulnerability by creating materials yeah. and putting them out there to allow people to purchase and read your blog. But without, I feel like without vulnerability, it's hard to have real growth. 100%. I, I was just thinking something similar that I mean, I still get like, 
I don't even know. It's probably just anxiety, a little bit of anxiety before like every Instagram post. And my brain likes to do this whole thing where it's like, how could someone disagree with this? Am I saying anything that could be interpreted a weird way? Like I still want to like overthink second guess, you know, question. And the more, you know, I think a lot of people think it gets easier as you have a business, at least the vulnerability and putting yourself out there. But for me, it's been the complete opposite. When I started, I was like, I'm just going to share stuff. Like I'm a nobody on the internet. Like I, you know, nobody cares about my silly artic cards. And now I'm like, I go on my Instagram and I like, I'm like scared of, of even, you know, I'm, it's like, it gets scarier to put yourself out there. The bigger that your audience gets, at least for me, I don't think, I don't even think that's probably true for everyone, but for me, even just posting an Instagram now feels vulnerable because I feel like I have a lot of eyes on what I'm doing. And I don't know, I feel like sort of pressure to not be sharing false information. I feel pressure to be, I don't know, you know, so I totally agree with you. And that's where I think that growth comes in for sure. And you have to just, I don't know, a big thing I'm trying to work on right now, even living in the camper and we've been doing some adventures and stuff lately is reading books about it is like seeking discomfort putting yourself in situations where, you know, you succeed, even though it's challenging and you think you might not be able to. So trying to channel like all of those types of thoughts during these things. But I agree. I think the growth comes from the discomfort. And I'm definitely not saying like that it's not scary for me. I mean, every product release, I'm like, I can't release a product and like disappear from the internet. I have to like be on it and be like, what if someone finds a mistake? Like, and I almost always like literally get an email within the first, like, at least for sure a day where someone has something to say about it, you know, so that I'm, I'm sort of like, that's like the game I play now is like, what did I do wrong this time? But <laughs> that's a horrible mindset, but you know, it's like, it is a little bit scarier. The, the more it kind of it builds, then the more I can sort of psych myself out at times to like, keep putting myself out there, keep sharing opinions and like handle and receive any criticism or feedback that comes my way, like kind of with grace and in the way that I want to handle it. But I totally agree. That's where the growth I think comes in. I've definitely grown a huge amount from this business. And I think it's almost all from just like, I am not like a person. I don't even, my friends all laugh that I have like an Instagram page with like so many followers. Cause I barely even use social media personally. I'm not like that. So it is very uncomfortable for me to like do that. That's just not like the world that I would personally find myself in if I didn't have a business. So yeah, Girl, same. Like <laughs> I don't post, like, I don't ever post a social media. That's not like business. Stuff. Like never, <laughs> yeah. never. Now never. I do with my camper. Cause like, I'm like, everyone needs to see this beautiful shining aluminum. Um, but like my personal life, I'm like very separated. I don't like to post it all online. So it w- it's hard for me to even share like family photos on speechy musing sometimes. Like I, I don't know. I feel like I'm exposing, like, I don't know this like little private side of my life to like so many eyeballs now. And it, it can be kind of intimidating. Yes. And when you have so many eyeballs on you, it's, I mean, there's a, there's a level of, first of all, there's a level of responsibility first of yes. all. And like, yes. in, if any of you out there are looking to start a business, that is something that you're going to start to realize is like, there's a level of accountability and responsibility, whether you get a big Instagram following or not, even if it's just like a private, if it's a private practice or something, there's a level of responsibility and accountability that's there. That is not, it's not the same as whenever you are just an employee, like working for someone else. It is not the same thing. And also having your name on something is it's very, very, very different as well. I agree. at school, I actually think one of my biggest professional strengths is my ability to say like one of my favorite lines at school is that's not my job or like, I'm just going to leave that. Like I, that's not my problem. Someone else can figure that out. And I feel that like, that's the complete opposite in my business. Everything is my problem. Everything is my responsibility. Um, all the information I disseminate is my responsibility. My materials being, you know, appropriate materials for the wide range of students we serve is my responsibility. So like I, yeah, there's a lot more to take on versus like at school, I'm really good at being like, that isn't my job. Like figuring out this issue is not my job. And now I'm like, Ooh, it's all my job. Yes. <laughs> it's all my job. Yeah. But with <sighs> risk, risk, I always think that, you know, with risk comes greater reward, but I think with greater taking on responsibility comes greater reward as well. So you have to take those risks and you have to take like, I mean, a huge part of what I try to do is take full responsibility for all the feedback I get. I mean, everything that I put out there, I try to take hundred percent. Like that's my bad. Those are my words. That was my mistake. And that's something that comes with, you know, or has created growth, I guess, for me as well is just complete responsibility for what I create. And yeah, when you're saying private practice, I totally can see that too. It's like, you're so responsible to the clients you serve in a different level than you might be in a setting where you have limits and stuff placed on you. Now it's like, 
you're making all of those decisions and there's no one else's sort of, there was no fallback saying, well, this is how the school district does it. You know, it's like, well, you made that decision. So um, yeah, it's, it's tricky for sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, you set those boundaries. So Shannon, tell us a little bit about your like living situation now. And I know you've had some, some changes and I know that's been in alignment with your just lifestyle goals and your financial goals. So can you tell us like, Clearly, if you're watching some video, you see that she has the Airstream <laughs> camper behind her and AKA she's her and her husband are living in it, which is awesome. Yes. Um, can you tell us like how that started, why that started and yeah. kind of take us through that journey? Absolutely. So I kind of went through the beginning of my journey, like how I worked these sort of more traditional jobs. Um, I left my full-time school district job. Um, I can't even remember what year some year and they um, wouldn't let people go part-time. And I just, it, it was just, burning me out so bad to do that plus speechy musings. And I just was like, I need something part-time. So I quit that and lo and behold, the next year, same district, someone was out on maternity leave. And so I sort of was set up with like that and they allowed that to be part-time and or I, I maybe advocated for myself <laughs> to allow that to be part-time. And um, that was like my favorite year ever professionally, as far as having balance, that was just my favorite. Um, and then I did subbing for the same district. I, I worked as a para special ed teacher, speech pathology subs. So I did subbing random days and sort of that was my part-time gig. Um, and then I added back in a couple, two days a week of outpatient kids. Um, and so, it, and so, you know, the maternity leave dropped off and I was sort of just patching together sub jobs and this outpatient, um, job. And we traveled um, to the Galapagos, which was like my top vacation ever. And then COVID hit when we were there and all the jobs were like, we don't want you back. We, cause you know, so many clients were dropping off for outpatient that they didn't need like me as a part-time per diem anymore. And I don't even think they wanted my germs or more people in and out of the building. So they were like, we're done. The school went virtual. They didn't need my subbing anymore. So in speechy musings, you know, was, is plenty to do full-time. It's just, I like love my work as an SLP. I'm not the person who was always like speechy musings is what I want to do. I loved directly serving students. I loved my school job. I just was like struggling a lot with overwhelm. So I was trying to find that right balance. Um, so we got back March, 2020 or, you know, whenever COVID hit and I had no jobs, everything evaporated. And I decided I'm just going to commit to this, um, and see sort of where the pandemic goes. Um, so it was actually great. I spent a lot of time digitizing all my materials, making things way more friendly for teletherapy. I learned how to make boom cards, like did sort of that whole thing um, for the rest of that school year. And then I had to make the decision to want to like apply for a job for the next school year or like, what do I do? Um, I had a really hard time with it. I just felt like a lot of my speech therapy friends were saying how hard it was, you know, doing in the schools and all the districts by me wanted full time, especially now that they get more and more desperate for SLPs. I'm like, I don't, I just didn't think I could give to the jobs that were sort of available. So I decided to take another year off speechy musings. And my husband, when COVID hit, his job went complete remote. So he works um, in tech um, and he was biking to work every day in Madison prior to this, then COVID hit. And they were like, you know, we just want um, everyone to be remote right now. So we were just looking at sitting in our house for the next year, both working remote and Madison in the winter is like, it's a seven month long winter where you can barely go outside. We are outdoors people. Um, and we just decided let's just maybe buy a camper. Let's like do something. So we looked into all of it, um, ended up deciding to just book month long Airbnbs where you can get like the massive discounts on if you go book for a month, they give you like 60% off or whatever. So we found three month long Airbnbs and just skipped winter that year. And I feel like that set off this whole thing where I was like, wow, like we can, and we didn't rent our house. We didn't do anything. We just decided to keep it simple. We took my Subaru out and just took the dogs and lived out in California, Arizona and Austin, Texas for a few months. Um, I just feel like that was just like the impetus to all of this. While we were on that trip, we got the Airstream. We started running our house. We just started making all of these changes, being like, we, this is like possible. We can do this. Um, it worked to work on the road. We are, as I said, I'm, I've been sort of money obsessed since I like turned into an adult, actually probably my whole life, but we um, are pretty obsessed with like fire and financial independence, retiring early. So we all of a sudden were like, you know, the dot, I think things started clicking. We were sort of like, let's just spend our vacation budget on these Airbnbs this year. And then it whole, it turned into a whole thing, you know? So, um, 
we bought the trailer. We found someone to rent our house out. We, so now, yeah, now we're living like a completely simplified life out of our, um, it's actually a decently sized trailer. It's 30 foot, which I feel like is, is reasonable, but we're living out of our 30 foot trailer. Our big priority right now is financial independence. So we're working really hard toward like you know, buy nothing, um, which is actually great because there's no space for anything in this, in this, which keeps those expenses down. Um, our house is profitable right now. So we're using that resource to sort of like, and we had put so much work in the house the last five years renovating. So it, it's like in decent shape. It's right next to the university. Um, so we rented that out. Um, that makes enough money to pay for our campground fees. Um, and then we just try to save everything that we can save. Um, so that's sort of where we're at now, but I feel like it wouldn't have happened with COVID. And to be honest, it isn't my ideal professional balance. Um, I do miss direct work as an SLP so badly. I miss my kids so badly. <laughs> it's like, it's like torture. Sometimes I've, um, I'm like one of those bad SLPs that's friends with some of my parents that I work with on Facebook. So they still send me videos of their kids and I'm like, Oh, it just like me. It hurts my heart. Like I miss it so much, but, um, you know, can't have it all at all the time. So this is the balance for now. Right now it's like saving and money. And the, when we get settled somewhere, I'm sure I'll get an SLP job again. Um, but right now the lifestyle, yeah, living on the road, we're generally doing month long stays because they're a lot cheaper. Um, trying to just pick warmer places that we don't freeze in our camper this winter. And, um, we're with family right now in Phoenix, Arizona, we're visiting family. We haven't seen like all of COVID. I mean, so it's just given us this awesome gift to be able to see people we wouldn't normally see. And, um, yeah, we brought our dogs with us. My husband works remotely out of the trailer every day. Um, it's, it's been pretty, it's been pretty amazing. Actually. It's, it's been a huge adventure. We've never towed anything. We didn't own a truck. We have never done anything like this. So we, I feel like we were like, speaking of discomfort, like I cried, I've cried so much since we started doing this. I'm just like, I mean, we're like almost a semi length when we drive. I mean, it is, it's like terrifying. We had to go through the mountains of Colorado. Like, you know, I'm like shaking. Yeah. It, it's like, it's scary, but it's very exciting. Very fun. I love adventure. We met, um, my husband and I met in Kenya traveling. So we're sort of like just adventurers, um, at heart anyways, but yeah, that's the lifestyle right now. It's a very long story, but that's sort of how it melded from like me doing speech work to like, now I'm living in a camper doing speechy musings full time. <laughs> Like that is freaking awesome. <laughs> well, and it, it's fun how like y'all weren't necessarily like, we are going to go travel. It was just like the way that COVID aligned and yep. he went remote and then you were remote with doing speech and musings. It was just kind of like, yep. okay, well now we have, we have this opportunity and it's so cool. Cause I feel like, I love how y'all just kind of went with it. I think a lot of times we can be very much like, oh, I could never do that. And it's like, well, do you want to, you know, yeah. oh, I can never run out my house. Like even like, did you guys have to like move out, move out all your furniture and all that stuff at your house? We did. Like, how did, we how did. did y'all do that? It was horrible. It was actually horrible. Oh my gosh. It was so much stress. We, I mean, so we, we left it quote furnished, but like all of our belongings had to go and they have a baby. We are child-free don't plan to have children. So like our home is set up for like working. We have two offices. We don't have like a baby room, you know, so they have a baby. So we had to clean out almost all of our personal possessions. Um, and this was when we were trying to like buy the camper, move into the camp. So it was a lot. That month was very, very challenging, but, um, for us, it's about the money, you know, it was worth it. Otherwise the house sits there and it's just a resource we're not using. So right. worth it. But, um, yeah, Nate, my husband would say that, you know, how you said we just like sort of went for it. Um, that's my personality for sure. Like I, I will get myself into hairy situations because I'm just like, you know, I'm just going to do it. You know, people say, you know, I'm like, I tow this. Everyone's like, how, why would you tow it? Like, isn't that scary? And I'm like, um, yeah, but why would he be able to tow and not me? Like, that's just my personality. Like he has no skills to be able to tow. He's never towed anything, but you know, well, I'll just figure it out. That's like sort of how I am. So yeah. like, I'll dive in and just figure it out. But yeah, <laughs> just do this. I say that all the time. Like, just go do the dang thing. Like you yeah. don't need permission from anyone. And yeah. I love what you said. This is like kind of not related, but I love what you said about how it's like, everyone like kind of expects him to be able to drive the camper, <laughs> but then you're like, why can't I do it? Like he doesn't, He's, it's not like he's got a truck driver's license and no, I don't like, no, he has no anatomy on the, on the mail that would, you know, prevent, yeah. And make him a better driver. I, I'm like, I don't understand. Like, you know, but everyone's like, do you drive? And I'm like, of course 
outside drive. But I, I think that sort of mindset is like what gets me living in a camper because I'm sort of like, of course, we'll figure it out. Like right now we don't even have hookups. So if we we're showering and all the public showers, we're like collecting all of our, you know, all of our waste and everything. We have no idea how to do that. We, we were just, we parked it here and I'm like, we will figure out how much we can go through and how this all works. Like I sort of, that's just sort of like how I, how I operate. I stress my husband out greatly. He is not this way at all. So he's constantly like, yeah, I'm like, you know, we can do this. Yeah. He's like, I don't know. He's so logical and practical. And I'm more like, let's make it an adventure. <laughs> but you balance each other out, which by mm-hmm. the way, um, for those of you who don't know, my husband and I, we did live in a refurbished school bus for the first year of our marriage. That's, a, that's how we were able, how part also part of how we were able to pay off my, the rest of my student loans. So and, awesome. um, I loved it. Honestly, Shannon, I would have stayed in it mm-hmm. if I didn't have to live outside of the city limits. Like I really, oh. like I loved, and we weren't traveling in it. We were just yeah. living in it, but like, I loved the bus. Like, cause we kind of, we kind of got to this moment where it was like, we either put another couple thousand dollars into it to really get it where we wanted to be, or we get an apartment and mm-hmm. I was like driving really far to get everywhere. So I was just over it. But, um, but just say, yeah. I'm get, I'm asking you if you know what this is because I used to live the schooly life too. Um, a composting toilet. Yeah. Have, have y'all looked or into that? that? Yes. Yeah, so we actually have like an off grid cabin, like <laughs> that we like go that we, yeah, that it, I mean, so we're into like all, all of that. Um, we don't have a composting in here right now, but definitely a lot of people put those in. So you, you don't have to like put that all in a tank. I think that's something we would be interested in. We're pretty like good at roughing it. Um, we're like campers and backpackers. Like I'm like, we don't have towing experience, but we're very good at like roughing it and, and doing that. Yeah. I'm like, I have no problem. Someone made a joke about pooping in a hole the other day. And I'm like, I was doing that three weeks ago. I'm like, that's like real life. <laughs> that's not, that's, not a, that's, that's my life. That's, not yeah, that's actually real life. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that, you make it what you want. Like, I yes. think that's the beauty. Like, cause I know, I know some people who like, they looked at me and they, first of all, when we got married, they looked at Joe and they were like, oh, wow. I can't believe you found a woman willing to live in that thing. But it's like, you, you, you make it what you want. Like, if that's oh, not yeah. what you want to do, then go do something else. Like yes. it's fine. But it's all about just what, you know, what you and your priorities are for your family. Like you mentioned, like you and your husband don't plan on having children. So like that, that changes your decision-making process, you know? Absolutely. And just, yeah, exactly. It changes a ton. And we were talking about finances, lifestyle. I mean, that, that plays in hugely as far as what maybe we're able to do. And like the being a nomad, you know, you don't have that level of community. I think this would be way harder with children. I'm not sure I would be, um, I'm not sure I would be able to do it. So it, it changes. Yeah. What, what opportunities are most tempting. And then, yeah, going off my own personality, I know myself very well. I'm like, um, what is, Oh, (laughs) this is like, so, so random. But one of my friends that I should get a nasty woman shirt, not because of the political history, but just because I'm like actually disgusting. So I'm like, I can live in a camper. Like that is, this is like, so my vibe, you know what I mean? Like I know myself very well. I don't get grossed out very easily. Like I'm just like a, a very gross camping type human being. So like, this is very, very me. This is not what, like, I don't think a lot of people I know would probably love living like this. I have absolutely no problem living like this though. Like it's, it's not a problem for me, but I think it is like knowing yourself. Like I know, um, I have a very unique interest and very, you know, sort of like niche things that I'm interested in that I think this just lends itself very well to, but this is definitely not the path for everyone, I would say. (laughs) Right. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's just like, and I think sometimes we get caught up in this idea of what we're supposed to do, especially people that are very perfectionist. Cause Mm -hmm. it's like, well, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what I'm supposed to do. Like I'm supposed, you know, I went to, I went to grad school and I'm, I'm supposed to go to the SLP job every day. I'm supposed to work at the school or blah, blah, blah. And if you want to do that, that's fine. But also just recognizing, like, I think sometimes we get caught up in like the I'm supposed to's yeah, and like actually not without thinking about like, is this actually what I want to do? Like same yeah. thing, even like in business and all that type of stuff. Um, I do want to ask you though, tell me about you guys' journey with fire. What did, what are y'all's goals with, uh, fire fire, uh, is financial independence, retire early, or the new one is, which I kind of like it's financial independence, relax early. Ooh, you heard that. that's great. I like that. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, our goals for that are just 
we, we call it our work optional lifestyle. Um, we want to get to work optional lifestyle. Um, we don't have children. So, you know, I sort of feel like I don't think I'm just going to like retire at age 40. I'm, you know, I think they're, you know, we like our professional lives a lot. We both like working. So we call it work optional. I think that's what we're working toward. Um, my, our biggest goal would be to hit that point in nine years from now. Um, but I think that is a, an extreme stretch goal, but I like my, I like extreme stretch goals. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so I guess that sort of is the goal we would like probably love to have some sort of, I don't know if homestead is the right word. Um, but my husband gardens, we grow our own food. He, we bike a lot. So, um, I quick change of background, everybody. We <laughs> Sorry, have everyone. difficulties, but take it away, Shannon. <laughs> Um, so for fire, I think our goal would be nine years is like our stretch goal for timing. Um, I don't think that will happen, but I sort of like these big, big, big unwieldy goals. Um, and then I think our goal would probably be to find somewhere to buy land or like have a homestead. This is the, this is the problem. <laughs> it's her dog. If you're watching the video right now, my dog is like licking my face. Um, <laughs> um, I think our financial independence goal would be to find some sort of homestead. My husband loves growing our own food. We really love like self-sufficiency in all ways. So we like, you know, minimizing our energy, minimizing what we're using, minimizing all of that. So I think the dream would be taking this camper to all these different places, figuring out where we love, where we want to settle down and sort of getting, um, a home or property to sort of like be a little bit more self-sufficient. I mean, I don't know if we want to go as far as like having farm animals, but you know, that, that could be in the future as well. We love, um, I don't know if you know what a yurt is. This is like another one of those weird things yes. I'm like very into. So yes. we stay in yurts all over. I love yurts. So something sort of like that vibe might be like kind of our future, uh, financial independence goals. But right now I think we're, we've been in you know, the last 10 years, our huge focus was on increasing income. So like not actually doing, I mean, we reduce expenses. We're not like, uh, buyers really. We're sort of minimalists, but we were really increasing our income. And now I think we're sort of like decreasing expenses, decreasing needs, figuring out what minimal amount we can live off of. And then trying to like invest in some sort of property or something where that, um, is easy to do. So maybe somewhere we could grow food or, um, live sort of, I don't know, self-sufficiently. I, you're literally speaking all of my language and the things that I love. love. Do you guys know like where y'all would want to do? And that's another question I have for you just like with this lifestyle, like, are you, you know, you're not really seeing family all the time. Is that something that y'all want to try and do is like be closer to family or is that something that's not really just like a priority for you guys long-term? It's a hard one for us. So all of our family is in Wisconsin. Um, I grew up in like a super small town. Like my parents live a half mile from both sets of my grandparents. So, um, that is a, a thing, but Wisconsin is tough. You know, it's for growing. The growing season is short. So, I think right now we're like, it could be Wisconsin. We might just decide, you know, family is important and we do love Wisconsin, but I don't know right now. I think we're leaning toward like Appalachia. Um, I love Asheville area. I don't know. I think the gardening season's pretty good there. It's a little warmer in the winter. Um, I think that's probably what we're leaning toward, but it's really hard to say. I feel like we could end up, we could end up in Canada for all I know. We like talk, we toss around so many ideas. My husband like keeps throwing out New Zealand. I'm like, we're not moving to New Zealand, but, um, <laughs> you know, too far. That one's yeah, too could, far. That's too far. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe somewhere in like, um, Blue Ridge mountain area would be like a dream, I guess. Um, we'll take the camper there, I think next year and do some exploring, but Yeah. I love that. So are y'all kind of just, y'all are probably going to do the camper thing, like kind of that, this is probably going to be a, a, a long-term thing and you'll just keep running at your house. Yes. So my thought right now is maybe three years. So I have like a very long map in my head of like all the places I want to go and all these things. So right now we're doing like the West coast tour, the next year we'll do like an East coast tour. Um, and then I kind of want to try again, like, and do like boondocking where you live like out on public land with no hookups, no anything. I kind of want to go back out West and do that like year three to see if we could like really, really do it and like live out on, on the land. Uh, so that would be a huge goal. So we sort of have this three year where we want to rent the house, convert it to money, use the money to pay for campground fees and then, um, mm -hmm. see where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. And just like going back to, first of all, you not taking that butthole's opinion into account. <laughs> 
um, and applying to grad school, you starting this blog in undergrad, like all of that has allowed you to do this like remote work, creating an income yeah. to like set you up for all this cool stuff that you're doing. Like, I just, like, I just love it. And it's so unique. And yeah. I think it's so good to have you on just to show people what's possible. Like whether or not this is your specific dream, whatever, but mm -hmm. just to show that like, you aren't, you are never stuck in the situation that you're in. And there's always, you know, you can always create opportunities for yourself and have those intentional conversations. I know like you and your husband, I'm sure you guys, like that's how me and that's how me and Joe are. Like we talk about all that stuff all the time. Like all what the do we time. do? What yeah. do we like? Okay. In a couple of years, we want to have, we want to, these are our goals for this year. Like yep. we have like every anniversary and every new year's because it ends up like <laughs> being every six months, we like write down our goals and we write down like what we want to have accomplished in that time. And I think that's so important because so many of us are just sort of like flippy floppy through life. Da, da. <laughs> yep. And then you end up and you're just like, how the heck did I get here? Like I'm miserable. I'm overworked and underpaid. <laughs> like what the heck is happening? That to um, me is like my personal strength. People like call me and they're like, I need out of the box thinking. I need someone to like think, you know, and I'm like, that is, that is me a hundred percent. Like, um, it, we sit down and we, so we actually, our biggest thing financially, one thing that really did good things for us was we, we try to buy out into the future as far as we can. So we would see all of our expenses and say, okay, we have enough money for the six months. And then we would pay for all of our vacations, like as far ahead of time as we could, or pay for like Christmas gifts or put aside things. So we would start to say, okay, we're good for even the next six months. Like we have all of our expenses covered. So everything we make now can go straight to investment. So it's like, it's, it's like planning further and further out. And like with camping now, this is like, it's so nice. Cause I can pay for our campground fees further and further ahead. And then our expenses in the moment go really far down. So it's like, I'm planning for like future Shannon success further and further out, which is like really fulfilling for me is to be able to like, you know, have that ability to sort of build slowly. Like, you know, when you're first starting out and graduating and there's all these loans, you may, you know, it would be really good if I had, could see like a month out and say, I have the money for these loan payments. I have the money for my rent and I have, you know, so it'd be like really good to get like a month ahead. Then you get like the emergency fund and you work up further. And now we're into the point where we're like really trying to set ourselves up like really far in advance. And like you said, we talk nonstop it, every night. I have like a, what we're going to talk about tonight discussion. Um, because it's like, you know, like we need to plan the month of April. Where are we going to live? And we, we decide what our priorities are. Are we just going to go super cheap and work a ton? Are we going to stay somewhere off grid where we have to work really hard to like even go to the bathroom or shower, but the perk of nature. So like we make intentional decisions together, everything it's, it's, pretty unreal the amount of effort and time that it takes to probably make all these decisions, but you get better and better as you go. <laughs> and it, it, I feel like it forces you to be intentional. And like that work is something that I just like scream at people all the time. <laughs> um, because if you're not intentional, then that's when you are just kind of like flossy and floozy through life. Blah, yep. blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, you're not, you're never, you know, if you aim at nothing, you hit nothing. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like for you and your husband, like y'all are constantly aiming at something. And even, even yes. if you don't hit it, like whatever, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you, aim, if, if you aim at it, maybe you'll get close to it. That's why like, I say that the nine year thing, like I really feel if you do the math, it will not happen. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, if I say 20 years, I, it, it might probably take 20 years. But if I say nine, maybe it will take 13. I don't know. So that's sort of like how, you know, I'm like, that seems like a nice, um, it was a goal I set a year ago. So it's a 10 year goal. Um, but yeah, I agree. It's I, I, I like to set these big goals. I'm also not like terribly disappointed if I don't meet them because I know when I set it, I was like, that was pretty unwieldy, but it mm -hmm. set me up for that focus and that determination to like get there. So that's sort of like, it's more about like creating the systems that that might be possible or working toward that than like, I actually don't think it's possible, but that's besides the point. Well, <laughs> it's possibility it, it, is besides the point. Right. And you like, you know, yourself to know that, you know, there might be someone who's the exact opposite of you that like, if they set that and they don't mean it, they're like, oh my yes. gosh, like I'm going to combust with the light of or like suns. psychs them out. Cause they're like, I'll never do it. So why even try? Like, I know, yes. you know, there's people in that too, but I, that I'm not that way. I would rather just be like, I probably won't make that happen, but I'm going to pretend I will so that I can get closer to it. <laughs> like that's, that's a that's sort of like my, yes. 
I have to like trick myself a little. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And like that, and that's really all it, what it comes down to. Like a lot of times it's not right or wrong. It's not black or white. It's just like, this is, this is what I want. And then these are the steps to help get me there. And I think sometimes like when we, we are stressed, when we are anxious, when we are feeling like bogged down by a job that's underpaying us, or we have a lot of debt, it's really, it's, it can be really difficult to look past that, mm -hmm. um, and feel hope. And oh, I yeah. think, you know, without hope for your future, for your financial situation, for your business, if you're starting a business without hope, I mean, it's like, I couldn't operate without mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I totally well, agree. And I think that having those goals, even though I'm like, it probably won't be reached. It, it is exciting to me to think about. And so it gives you the, you know, um, I got really into like life coaching maybe a couple years ago, which I think has also helped in this whole journey. Um, not being one, but <laughs> receiving life coaching. Um, and you know, they talk a lot about setting impossible goals and even, you know, being in the discomfort of sort of seeing that as a possibility, but not thinking, you know, it may happen. And yeah, I, I think, I think that's something that for sure that gives me motivation and energy for some it doesn't and you have to sort of figure out what goals or thoughts or whatever lead to that feeling within you that drives you to make you know the actions you want to take but for me like seeing that as like the future really really propels me to sort of work toward that like to buy the camper and go explore the U.S. like I didn't grow up traveling I really hadn't been anywhere so we were like you know, we don't even know where we would want to live outside of Wisconsin. So having that 10 year goal is like, well, we need to know where we're going to live. So we have to back that up to now. And it gives me the motivation to like, learn how to tow the camper and cry through the mountains of Colorado. And it's terrifying. And, you know, cause I'm like, I feel like I see it, you know, I'm like, this has to happen. Like I had like a vision of, of where I'm headed. It doesn't just feel like, otherwise I'm too easy to give up. Like, otherwise I would learn to tow and be like, this is very scary and hard. And I would rather just like live in my house. Um, so I think having those those big lofty goals sort of gives me for me, that's what gives me the motivation to keep doing the, doing the hard thing. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, so many gems in this episode, but I'm wondering, uh, I do want to make sure I'm respectful of your time, but I have to ask like my final question, Shannon. Okay. <laughs> so okay. if you had, you've already given some really great advice, um, about knowing yourself and just going and taking a chance and doing it. Um, uh, what else would you want to tell all the listeners just about, especially, you know, somebody who's not quite sure somebody who's kind of like, they want to step out on a limb, whether it's like a change in lifestyle, like you're doing or starting a blog or starting a business. And they're just kind of like, I don't know, I don't know where to start. And I don't know if I have that hope and encouragement, um, kind of naturally built into my, my personality. What would you tell them? Yeah. I mean, I feel like what we mentioned earlier, building in uh, short wins is absolutely key. I think it's really hard to start and persist in something that you struggle in from the get-go. <laughs> I think that's really, really difficult. So I would look for something maybe with a short win. Um, I also sort of feel like clarity for me has never, ever, ever come from weighing decisions longer. Um, I just almost end up spinning into more confusion. So I think it would be like action, creating clarity. So like, I would just pick one. Um, honestly, I don't know that speech and musings was like this grandiose thing I dreamed when I started. I don't, I still probably prefer my SLP job to, um, creating resources only cause I just, I'm like an extrovert and I like the work setting, you know? So I think just picking something and starting, even if it's like, this isn't perfect, I literally see flaws with it now. I would say, but like doing it would give you information on what parts of it you like or what's working and what's not working. So like, I think some people, like we've talked about perfectionism, I feel like circled around it several times, but you want that perfect choice, the perfect answer, the thing that you're going to do to get yourself out of this place, but it's probably not going to be the thing. You're probably just going to have to keep trying different things. And the more you try, the more info you get about what you like or what you don't like. I literally thought my dream job when I graduated was working with preschoolers, um, in like a private practice. I don't really love private practice. I like the schools a lot more and I didn't like preschoolers at all. I liked middle schoolers. Um, so, you know, it's like, I think it's like, we all get in our heads and are like, I can just think my way into like creating the future that I want. I'll just think about it. And that's what I'm going to do. But for me, like 
I think I, I'm going to like something and then I get into it and I don't really. So I think sometimes if you're like feeling stuck, like, I don't know to even try, like you might be waiting for the thing that you think, you know, you, you want it, you want to think that it's like it, but I would just say like, I don't know, for me, I'm like very, you know, I have all these uh, hodgepodge mix, mix match jobs, like all this little, and I'm just trying all sorts of stuff. But I think that that works well for me to create like knowledge of what do I like and what's working and sort of how do I get myself out of the situation that I'm, I'm unhappy with at, at the moment. So I would just say like, start, even if it's not right, look for a small win that you could celebrate after starting and then know like it's not forever. And if it's just literal information on, on where you want to go next, that that's a useful next step. Uh, even if you switch jobs and you're like, I'm going to work with adults now. And then like month three, you're like, I actually really hate this. Like then just quit and, and move on, you know? So like, but now, you know, you don't like that. And that shouldn't be part of your future goals anymore. Um, so I think that's for me, like how I think about it is just like, I think I just like, I need action to create the clarity. I need to keep doing and trying things in order to get the answers that I, that I want. Yeah. Yes. And don't be afraid if you try something and it doesn't work out. Cause that's okay. Oh or yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. I think some people are definitely like gets, and that's why I'm like, I tread lightly because I do think you need to do something like, I don't know. I don't have the stamina to like do something that I fail at just like nonstop forever. So like, I do think finding something that you can feel, you know, good in at first, you know, even if it's not the forever thing, you know, searching for a quick win, I think is a, is a good thing, but just keep trying. And like, there's no shame in like taking something and just saying, this isn't for me, but now I know this isn't for me. And before you didn't know it wasn't for you. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just life. Like we try, you know, like we try it and then it doesn't work and then, okay, well, let's try something else. Like <laughs> that's what, I mean, and I try to, and I try to remind SLPs, like that's a, lo a lot of the things that we need to be doing with life to make life a little less difficult for us or a little less, um, you know, like daunting. It's the stuff that we do with kids. You know, I do, I work with a lot of birds of three. Like I tell, I tell the parents, like, we're going to try things. Um, and if it doesn't yes. work, we're going to try something else. Yes. And, and that, that doesn't that mean you okay. should have known from the get go what to do. Like you have to go through that process in order to figure out what works exactly. Yeah. But we want ourselves to be like above that. I often think like, we just want to be like, I, you know, I'm 30 years old. I should know what kind of job I want, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know what works. I don't know what balance works. I don't know what amount of hours I want. I, you know, it, it, I don't even know where I want to live right now. So, you know, like I do think we really want that certainty and we want those answers, but I don't think there is like an answer. I don't think there is like a thing. That's like the thing that has to be it. You know, I think it's going to be piecing together all the pieces of the puzzle and trying to find like that thing that makes the most sense at that time. But yes. Yeah. And it may be different for different stages of life. I know yes. a lot of us, you know, we all have different stages. Like I'm a very different person. I mean, I'm not a totally different person, but you know what I mean? Like me just getting out of grad school versus now mm -hmm. is, you know, like I'm very, like I've changed. My priorities have changed. Like the way I live change has changed and that's okay. And how like making your life evolve with you is not a bad thing and making 100%. your decisions and your situations evolve with you is definitely not a bad thing at all. Like that's, that's what you're supposed to do. That's 100%. I think my parents are the best for this. They, um, my dad got his job as a machinist in high school. He's worked at the same company since then. Um, he's about to retire. So like, I don't know, 40 years in the same um, company. And um, they both live in the same small town they were born in. They never went to college and they didn't leave. And I think they are like, my mom is like, move out of the state, get out of here, go do something like, do not get stuck here. You know, like I think they have like the opposite perspective where they committed really hard. Um, and I think didn't, you know, I think they're, they want something different for me where they're like, go just explore all of these whims, go try all the things, go live in all of the States, tell report back, tell us where we should move, you know? Um, but I think it's like, I almost saw the opposite perspective now where I do see, like, I think there, there should be a lot of trial and error. And I don't think like most of us are lucky enough to be born into the cities we should live in and be, funneled into the right job, job one, or know what we want. You're even year five in our career. Like, I think that it, you know, I think it's like the opposite of sort of that. We just all have to like figure it out as we go. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Like I literally have nothing to add. <laughs> nothing to add. Thank you so, so much for Thank coming you. on today. This was an absolute pleasure. I cannot wait to hear what you guys are going to be doing in the future <laughs> with the camping and the camping yeah. life.
Yes. Um, so all of her information is in the show notes. Um, you're at Speechy, Mus Speechy Musings. That's it, right? On Instagram, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Everywhere. Perfect. Facebook, and Pinterest, all the places. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And go check out her blog. Super, super awesome. Super informative. And thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. It was a blast. Yes. All right. Thank you, Shannon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you want to hear more no fluff, getting the dang thing done stuff for myself and other real life SLPs, be sure to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or pledge a small amount on patreon.com slash speech goods. If you found this content valuable, please share it with others so we can get this message out there. And if you haven't already, join us on Instagram. Handle is at speech goods. See you there.